Now let's talk about uh, this other issue, which is also very important. President John Mahama has hailed the National Development Planning Commission's determination to develop a framework document to serve as a long-term development plan for the country. Uh, and in his address to signify commencement of work for the 40-year development plan, President Mahama expressed optimism that the NDPC's action will reflect the aspirations of Ghanaians. Uh, we've had some people uh, say that because the document is not binding, that in itself is an exercise in futility. Uh, and I want to start with you, Mr. Amaba. What does this mean to us? I mean, everybody uh, says this is what we want. But you're a lawyer. If it doesn't bind on me as a government, then it's nothing, really. Uh, it's not everything that must be a law for it to be respected. We have the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. Countries have signed to it. Countries are not bound to be part of it. The countries are now using that as a working document. But in our country, I'm coming, I'm MPP, coming. NDC I'm almost coming. disagrees on everything. I'm, I'm coming. So you have this as an example, the development, uh, Millennium Development Goals, which countries have ascribed to it, but they are not bound by it, and yet they measure their performance against those uh, goals. So it is not everything that must be legal before it can bind you. The point is that once we have a framework which we have all ascribed to, and I like the way the NDPC went about this, they consulted every sector of this country. Political parties were consulted, chiefs were consulted, persons with disability were consulted, the religious leaders were uh, consulted. It has a broad acceptance. By so doing, we have, as a people, agreed to what is called a national manifesto. This national manifesto will now be tapped into by the various political parties. So NDC will look at the framework and the plan, MPP will look at it and tap from it. So for me, it's a forward-looking document, particularly because all the political parties have embraced it and they have contributed to the workings of the, of the document. I'm not sure any sector has been left out. So far, I'm yet to hear any sector that says that it has been left out. And yesterday, you saw what happened where there were solidarity messages to the program. The issue about whether it is binding or not I do not think that, as at now, we should start trumpeting that it is not binding. And for that matter, if a political party comes in, the political party will not be um, ready to follow the, the, the plan. That is a negative thought. As a country, we have been left behind in terms of our peers in the development processes. We were, we were, we were equated to Malaysia, to Singapore. They've all gone ahead. What can we do? That, for me, is the focus. It shouldn't be what is binding. What can we do to catch up? What we can do to catch up is such a plan. So the plan, for me, is good. The plan, for me, has been bought in by all sectors of this country. I am waiting. This is just a framework. I am waiting for the details. And when the details are now put into the framework, then we can now see the way forward. But as it is now, I am all out. Should we still have party manifestos? Oh, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, that this one, if you want it, call it a national manifesto. The political parties will not tap into that manifesto because this document is going to be contributed to by all political parties. Um, I heard Nimoy Thompson making the point that the MPP's concern was to put physical discipline in the plan. The various political parties had all that they wanted to be part of it. So you can see a collection of ideas that is going to be put into the plan. Mm. So for me, that's a national manifesto. We will now tap into it. So the MPP will tell us what they can do when it comes to, say, the idea of physical discipline. The NDC will tell us. So when you take the NDC and the MPP, this is what the NDC says about physical discipline. This is what the MPP says about physical discipline. But both have drawn it from the National Manifesto. Mr. Jaku, do, do, you, do, you do, do you think we should, to borrow Mr. Marvel's word, tap into when we are developing our party manifestos? Well, I, I think that there have been various development models all over the world. Some have had 
some countries have followed this kind of a model. I want to believe off my head that a place like India, they have a very strong institution called the State Planning Commission. And virtually what has happened in India over the last 40 years has come out of what's the State Planning Commission. And it was indeed, it was one of uh, the prime ministers then, uh, who was then the, 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 the chairman of the State Planning Commission. That was a model and it worked somewhere. In some of the other countries, they have not had a centralized plan and have gone ahead to develop very well. I mean, uh, in some countries, they have had what you would term a benevolent dictator who was very clear in his mind mm -hmm. and decided that we will do this and we will do that and we will do that. And it's worked. And it has worked. I mean, uh, recently when Lee Kuan Yew died, all of a sudden people are beginning to say, yes, he did as good, but mm -hmm. it was at the cost of our personal liberties and freedoms and all of this. So America has gone to where it is without having a centralized uh, plan. But everybody had looked at the American dream. The people who came there first said clearly that it was a love of our freedom and development that has brought us here. Mm. I am saying that some countries have gone ahead and developed based on a plan that everybody in India, whether it was uh, the BJP or it was the Congress, everybody followed the plan to a certain extent. Can uh, we do it? We must decide as a country that we want to take that model. Haven't we decided? Uh, I think that it is, I, I, I don't know the extent of commitment. But at least I, with I, the launch? With the launch, yes, 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 I agree. But you see, look, let me tell you. You remember that as a, when we did a um, constitutional reform, and I really and truly don't know what has happened out of that thing. No, there has been a court case. Uh, it's it's so. unfortunate. Uh, I remember very clearly that when this issue of a national development plan came up, the then president, may he rest in peace, they said very clearly that he didn't think that it was necessary for political parties to have their hands tied by a certain development plan. I am happy that his successor is now beginning to say that there is a plan and let us all buy into it. I think that for me, the first thing is that we as a people, all the actors must clearly accept that this is the economic model we want to follow. We want to follow the model where there is a national development plan and then all of us can tap into it. I don't know the extent of commitments that we have. Yes, yesterday there was a launching of the framework, was it? Mm. But beyond that, mm. I think we must pursue it if that is what all of us want. Like I said, me, I have heard a former president in NDC saying that he didn't think it was right. But what do you think? Oh, I am saying this. I keep saying this. What I think personally as a human being is not too important here. But well, what is important? You, you no, represent no, no, no. a whole constituency. I am. I, I do. But I, so I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am, I represent a constituency under a political party. I am not too sure of what my party is saying instant. We, the, 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 the framework was sent to uh, uh, the former president, Kufo. I want to believe that the party executives have sat down together and have agreed on some things. I don't know that extent. But what I am saying is that the first thing is that it is not just about doing the plan. There must be a total buy-in. And if that total buy-in is there, then I can be sure, all of us can be sure, that our next manifestos will draw on that broad framework. Mm. My, my view, if you ask me now, is that I, am, I have nothing against us as a nation having a very broad framework. Post, guide post. These are things we want to achieve in the next 40 years. As to the way to do it, I believe that it must not be dictated. We would want to attain some milestones, uh, whether it is decentralization, health, education, these are milestones that we want to attain. So just like the MDGs, if you yes, like. Yes, 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 okay. yes. But I think that if there is an attempt to prescribe a way to How? do it, it might, it, might, it might pose a challenge. Okay. It, it really and truly might pose a challenge. But we must, I, 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 am, I am all for us having a very broad 
uh, agenda of de for, to, to develop. Okay. I, I quickly wanted to have your views on this one, uh, which is uh, coming out today. Teachers, education workers threatened strike over service conditions. And the story mm -hmm. I'm picking from myjoinline.com says that the Teachers and Education Workers Union, TEU, has warned it will be forced to take drastic measures, including a nationwide strike, if service conditions issues are not resolved by government soon. The teachers at Ghana's public schools have accused government of deliberately delaying negotiations on their conditions of service, which expired some five years ago. Chairman of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology branch of the union, Charles Arthur, told Joe News they have been forced to issue the threats because their demands have been long overdue. That is also generating some comment on our Facebook page. Just a couple of it. Uh, no money, no love says strike here, strike there. What's happening? Uh, Nuwokpo says August is a month of strike festival in Ghana. Soon we will see the police and army on strike. Uh, uh, that's a joke, right? Uh, Kake says strike everywhere. Who next? Ms. Amaba? Yes. The teachers mm. are also threatening mm. because of conditions of service. What is happening? Oh, nothing is happening. It has always been a feature of our our governors. Uh, you remember under the Kufu administration, teachers went on strike. Their salaries were withheld. I just think that um, labor relations should be conducted within the confines of the law. I think that government should be proactive in terms of its responsibility towards labor. Labor should also play within the game. That is the laws. It is wrong for labor to be negotiating with government whilst on strike, as the labor law does not allow that. I am of the view that with this uh, notice to government, the Minister for Employment will begin to put together a team. Must they always wait for somebody to threaten before they begin to? Must they wait for somebody to threaten? Exactly. They don't need to wait. If you listen to my opening comments, I said that labor relations should be such that both employer and employee should play within the game. Government should be proactive, and then labor should not also take the law onto itself and disregard the Labor Act and go but about But if doing government is not being it's proactive, wrong, it's wrong, it's if wrong. government's not being proactive... That's what I'm saying, that if government is not proactive, the labor laws allows trade unions to send government to the Labor Commission. That's Which a we, lot of people have described as not being able to not, bite. It is not fair. And don't you re occur that. We have institutions. If we all say that the police is not credible, and we don't, we bastardize the police, when there's an armed robbery attack in your house, would you call the police or not? That's not the same situation it as is, the NLP. It is. It is. In the same way, you cannot say that you have no confidence in the court. And for that matter, I take the laws into my hand. Well, because of time, uh, Mr. Jacqua, I'll allow you to. So I think that mm -hmm. both government and labor should play within the laws of okay. the country. All right. Mr. Jacqua, I'll give you one minute. Uh, well, I, I, I can agree to a certain extent with Amazba when he says that uh, it is important that we conduct uh, uh, labor issues within the confines of the law. Unfortunately, uh, government itself, unfortunately, government itself does not even seem to respect the law sometimes. Look, the case of pharmacists who are on a partial strike now, two times they have gone to the Labor Commission and the Labor Commission has directed government to do some things. Government has failed to do it. The, the Labor Commission could go to court. Well, <laughs> I agree. But you see, if, if today, why I say this is that I heard the Honorable Minister for, for Employment and Labor Relations saying that the doctor's strike is, is he was going to drag them to the Labor Commission. You, the Labor Commission directed you to do some things with the pharmacist thing. You have failed to do it over two years. When it suits you, you want to do it. But you see, Mama B, fundamental to all of these things that are happening, fundamental to all of this, we should not forget that this, currently, this country has a program with the IMF. And a strict conditionality of that program is that, for instance, uh, I think it's either this year or over the period, the, the, the compensation package should not go up by more than 10%. It is a conditionality uh, 
that comes with the program. Mm. So, so these all things are all the people are asking for won't get it. I mean, okay. uh, well, that the man who is paying your bills today has that determined that you will not increase your compensation package by more than 10%. They can cry all they want. <laughs> there is we'll there's a very strict confines within which government can. It is the home policy. We'll see policies. how this ends. <laughs>